What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ninja Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Blue Beetle has come and gone. Um, I've heard from people that have seen the film that it was just okay. There were some funny moments. Brian, you saw the movie. I want to hear your thoughts on what you thought of the movie. And was it a case of Blue Beetle is unfortunately in an era where the superhero genre, again, regardless of what you put out, it, the fatigue has set in and we and, and people just had enough. What are your thoughts on the performance that Blue Beetle had at the box office and the audience and critics, uh, what they had to say about the movie? So I generally like the movie. Um, I will say that I liked probably the first half to two thirds of it significantly more than the, the big set piece to end it, which is kind of a recurring theme. And I'll mm. tie back to what we've been talking about. Look, first off, my, my, my Jolo Maraduena stock, you, you will not be getting me to sell that. Um, I think he's awesome. I think mm -hmm. he's just got charisma to the moon and back and it shows in this movie. He's perfectly cast. I think the family is really well done. I think th th when I texted you and kind of said like they had something here that I hope they don't kind of totally get away from him. I think the first half of this movie, which is much more of like a family drama with heart and with humor, it worked for me. Uh, you know, George Lopez worked for me. Uh, Elpidia Carrillo worked for me. Even the Nana got a little bit over the top for me, but the grandmother, but it, this idea of the little twist, you know, I found this movie less inspired by Ant-Man. I thought it was much more Iron Man and Spider-Man. It was basically like taking element, it was like a young Iron Man, elements of Spider-Man. And then the twist was really that as opposed to hidden identity, the family is actually not only in on this, but is a big part of the support structure for Jaime Reyes to kind of cope with this. Yeah. That worked. I was like, this this is going pretty well. And like everyone's playing their part pretty well. And this is sort of like feel good and doesn't have the stakes of, oh my God, the universe is about to fracture that so many of these stories have had. So I was very happy yeah. with that. Yeah. And even the, like they didn't spend a lot of time on the origin of the scarab. They kind of were just like, they almost did, I thought they did something smart, which is kind of, they're like, these people have seen so many of these movies by this point. If we give you this huge cosmic backstory to this, we're just wasting time. Like the audience will accept that there is this device that exists yeah. and it gives you power. And if the, you know, if you happen to put it on, it, it might give you good power or it might give you bad power. Great. Like, I don't need to be like educated. It's fine. You, mm -hmm, you can do that. Mm -hmm. The problems they ran into though, was I could feel the effort to avoid copying Iron Man in the sense that once the suit emerged, the suit has a voice. This, you know, kind of like Jarvis, yeah. kind of like Friday. It has a personality, but they knew they couldn't use the like RDJ in the heads up display talking to the voice. But I got to be honest, that really works in the Marvel movies. And when you don't have it and you just have this CGI character, basically, or, or Maraduena in a suit just talking to you, it's very power it rangers. It's very power uh, rangers. And that feels kind of weak. And they don't really spend a lot of time building a relationship between Jaime and the suit, which in this case, the suit has its own personality because the scarab is kind of alive effectively. And so that's different mm -hmm. than Tony Stark building Jarvis, right? Like Jarvis is something he's created that just is has artificial intelligence. So there really doesn't spend a lot of time developing that and you're left kind of watching this suited character imagine and create Iron Man-esque weapons but like they're just sort of you're hearing these two voices on screen talk to each other and you're like as I said this felt very 90s Power Ranger to me so that's where the movie starts to lose it and then to my thing about more is more less is more this movie makes the mistake to my mind at the end of trying to set up this like epic huge mano a mano suit versus suit fight almost like Iron Man versus Iron Monger. And I was like, this movie didn't need that. 
It really didn't. Like this movie's strength was that it was small. This movie's mm-hmm. strength, like even Ant Man had Ant Man versus Yellow Jacket. This movie didn't need that. No. And when it went that route, it felt like a cheap version of Iron Man or Man of Steel. And so, but but those first half to two thirds to me was good enough that I was like stylistically, I hope that the gun because gun took this into his universe and said, this is kind of, Pardon. this is our blue beetle. And I assume it means he liked the style of storytelling. I liked it as well. Like, I hope they kind of tonally and color wise, I hope they do a little bit more like this, not the same, but just like that spirit that, that the part beginning of this movie had. So I, I generally liked it. And I, like I said, I thought the cast was pretty well done. It just gets too over the top and too, it tries to be something it's not in the final act and it just doesn't work. And Susan Sarandon is the most evil white woman that's ever appeared on screen. <laughs> and I don't know what the point, I don't quite get what was going on other than, I was like, are, are we sending a social message here? Yeah. Like, that I'm, like, she is so evil that I'm like, D- d- like even like as we said we love Th- thanos is like you know has 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 ethics like he has yeah, 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 a yeah. mentality like a process There's a reason a reason for what he's doing like this person is like like does she walk around like you know stomping on every bug that she sees like kicking every dog that she runs like does she literally go around and just try to hate on everything that she encounters in her life because that's how evil she is and it's kind of like we get it like we don't really need you to be yeah. that over the top especially when she's you know spoiler alert related to the original blue beetle yes yes yes, yes um yes. so you know this movie definitely is flawed i but i would tell people like you know i would tell people especially with a you know if you have a, a kid who's not like young young it's worth a watch because it mm-hmm. is more family friendly than some of what we've gotten and the stakes are lower and it's it's not as um it doesn't make some of the Marvel mistakes recently where they kind of just like skip over, like, you know, like um, Cassie Lang all of a sudden is like in the suit doing all this cool stuff and never really earned it. This one, there is at least this idea of like, Jaime doesn't really know what's going on. The suit, the suit is the character kind of driving the narrative for part of the, part of the movie. And so like, it makes mm-hmm. it more and more acceptable. So like, to me, I'm like, this is, it's like two and a half stars. And wow. Jolo is probably one of the two and a half by himself. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, if you don't go to the theater to see it, like, watch it at home. Like, watch it on streaming or like find it on a plane and watch it. Like, I think you, there's worse ways to spend two hours than than mm-hmm. this movie. Yeah, I'm gonna take a. I'm gonna definitely catch it, but not in the movie theaters. I just honestly, I just haven't had the time. And I and Brian, <clears throat> when I was on vacation. I think I was post. I don't know. I, I was. I was drinking. I don't. I don't know. But I, I went live, and I talked about you know, the fatigue. I think I feel like I'm. I, I, the interest is not there, Brian, for me anyway. To go out to these uh, theaters to see these type of films anymore. It was nice, though. I will say it was nice for two hours to like get to the end of the movie and not feel like the whole thing was a setup for a broader universe that did feel very nice. Like even though there were post credit scenes and all that sort of stuff, they were very Mm self-contained to blue beetle. And so it was, it was kind of nice to have a story where you're just like, all right, it's like this young guy's story and his little problem and his family. And it's not like, aha, like here's, the Justice League looming in the background. Like, you know, so I, I you know, that's why I say I, I kind of have a soft spot for it. This is better than I, like, here's the thing. The box office for this, it looks like it's going to be better than Shazam, Fury of the Gods, which is not saying much. It's not going to make money. Um, But I feel like it's good enough that it should. Like, to me. I think most I, people felt that way. Like, I feel, look, I understand why, you know, the rock headlining Black Adam automatically means Black Adam is going to have more box office than Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle's a lot better than Black Adam. Like, a lot better than Black Adam. Most movies are. The Room is better than Black Adam. <laughs> I'm quite certain, Brian, that um, Blue Beetle will be back in, not in his own film, but in a part of 
the DC universe that uh, James Gunn is building. And I think that will be a very interesting moment in time when that happens. Because we're talking about how old is this dude, Zolo? 22. 22. I would say by 25, he's in the suit again. Like, he's not going to get acted off the screen by, mo- by most people. Like, he won't. That's So he can hold his own. And he's grown up, obviously, in Cobra Kai. But he's, like like I said, I would I have stock in him as an actor in general. I think he will expand into other roles um, over the next 10, year, 10 15 years. Mm-hmm. But he was good as this character. Like, no question. Freddie, Tracy, both for, seem to have thought of the movie as okay but nothing to run out to the theaters to go see. And quite honestly, Brian, I think for m- many people, even the, the hardcore individuals like m- ourselves are just a little bit uh, overseeing the same things, Brian. I'm just not looking forward to any of it anymore because I just don't want to see the same thing over and over again, right? Yeah, and that's the problem with the third act. You get to the third act, and you're like, I've seen this done better by better choreographers. You know, the effects are not terrible. Like, there's actually, in some ways, I think the visuals here are certainly better than some of the worst that Marvel's been putting out in the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you've seen Iron Man. Like, you've seen a suit that does cool things cooler. (laughs) I don't think they had a choice. So the, the thing is, yeah, if you want to point to the strikes, um, there's no question that the inability of this cast to promote together mattered for sure mm-hmm. because of what it represented, right? It's first Latin mm-hmm. kind of superhero film. And like, you know, I you thought were- this would be like Black Panther almost. People will come out, bro. What are you talking about, man? Well, I don't know if it'd be that big, but I don't want people to think like this was the difference between this making 500 million and the 200 ish million it's going to make. It yeah. probably cost them 10% off their box. Like maybe the opening weekend is 30 instead of 26, something like that, Mm -hmm. if they've been able to promote it. But the problem is the strikes hit so close to the release date, all the trailers were out. Like you can't, at some point the trains left the station. It's it's the reason I think the Marvels is gonna be put out on time also, because I think (laughs) when that that bombs, they're gonna tell people, "Ah, it was the strikes, man. We we couldn't get free out there. We couldn't get Sam Jackson out there. They weren't allowed to promote. That's why this movie failed. Yeah. I can't wait to see that movie. We don't know why, because I am looking forward to destroying it. <laughs> because we've been calling this, Brian, for the longest. And out there is Kevin Feige talking about this movie's great. He's been saying that for a minute. Well, the track record of film executives telling us that superhero movies are great is batting oh, zero my right now. God, so. man. I will say this, though. <laughs> I don't know if this is a good news or bad news. Did you see how long this movie is? Which one? Marvels. No. 93 minutes. Wow. Shortest MC- it would be the shortest MCU movie. If that if that's true, it'd be the shortest MCU movie ever. Question. Are you gonna go to the theaters to see this movie? Well, I probably am because there won't be much left. I mean they already I mean, Dune getting pushed was like that like ruined by Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Word Cause, up. Well, because I was like, doing part one, we didn't get to we didn't get to do that the right yeah, way because exactly. it was during the pandemic. I watched it on HBO Max day and date, and now like I don't get to see the part. I don't get to see part two like on time either. Like I gotta wait like another six months for this, yeah, yeah, and instead, yeah, yeah. what am I left with? The Marvels and maybe Aquaman two. Like, come on, I got, I got Wonka. Like, I got nothing. <laughs> they see Rebel Moon. That's why I tell you, Rebel Moon. I'm in. <laughs> What else is there? Yeah. Yeah. Rebel Moon should have been released in the theaters just because of what's out there. There's really nothing out there. I've been watching classic films. I took my kid to see the original Jurassic Park in the theater this weekend because I was like 30th anniversary. Oh, wow. They brought that back. I sent you a text. I went to see Enter the Dragon in the theater. 50th oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's How was that? I've been going to see. I've been going to see the classics. <laughs> <laughs> if Chinese connection comes up, call me so I can go see that. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Let us know in the comment section. Did you guys see Blue Beetle? What were your thoughts on it? What was your score? Uh, you can do so many superhero films, but how you how different can they be when it comes to 
storytelling and you know the 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 the, the responsibility that they feel or whatever it is we've we've seen so much of it how different can it be Let's that's see. why yeah and that's why i think with this mess that marvel's in i really think you know at some point it's going to take them shelving a lot of the avengers verse and pivoting toward the mutants just because there is such a dis distinction in the types of stories that are available to tell through the x-men and how their powers look because they're not as always fantastical or visual Certainly. right and so i kind of feel like that would be a breath of fresh air that's why i think superman if it is less is more that could be a breath of fresh air like I, that's kind of where we're at you know when the mutants do come uh on screen uh, it, it, it's just i don't know brian it, it's just i don't know how they're gonna do it certainly i, I just don't want there and we've seen this before and we've been this is what we've been waiting for yeah. a world where all of these guys exist granted the phoenix saga even in those Soup, uh, Spider Man was in it. Mm. You saw Easter eggs that they exist. Even Spider Man in, in, in his own thing, he went to go visit the X Men. So these are little things, Brian. How can they make that work without separating them? It's going to be very difficult, especially after seeing Deadpool 3 and what we're going to get there. It's like when you bring the mutants back. How different and how unique and how will they be? How much more exciting? I'm telling you, man, they're in a rough spot. They're in a rough spot. I, but I, I really think I'm onto something when I say like they need to get to less is more. They they need to bring the stakes back down. They need to make certainly them, Brian. Like, like I tell you what, I, I, one thing next year we ought to do because we love it so much because it's the 10th anniversary. We should do a rewatch and discussion of Winter Soldier because it'll be the 10 year anniversary from. What I still think is the high point of, of yes, the MCU's existence. One. And part of why it's a perfect movie is that it's Marvel at its best without all of that cosmic end of the universe looming, even though it was part of the progression. And we've lost that in all these stories. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this. Um, I know this conversation turned into something else, but Blue Beetle was a topic, correct? Yeah, and I think, but I think it ties to the state of the superhero genre, which is really yeah. what we're talking about all the time. And so that's, and I think Blue Beetle had both some strengths, but fell victim to, I think, a lot of the classic failings that we were talking about in, in these movies right now. And that 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 is the difference between an okay two and a half star experience, and I think. What started out, I thought, for the first you know, 60, 70 minutes as what could have been more like a three and a half star experience. So, Let us know in the comment section below. Um, hit that like button and uh, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And uh, things ain't looking good, but we will see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report because it is... It, Brian, it's like there's no hardly no news and Tracy was upset today because the news was what was the news that he was like stop pulling strings here um, there was some news that came out regarding Thor 5 oh, and I Taika Waititi like, I thought and stuff like this thing about Thor 5 I'm yeah. like is your career that hard up that you're already <laughs> trying to stump for like what that's a whole other thing these people who are like trying to hang on I just find it hard to believe that he's gonna be coming back and that they're giving oh. him the keys again, and so it's just like like Tracy said, stop pulling, stop trying to make headlines here because we know nothing else is going on, and and you want to spice things up a bit for the genre. We don't need this. Well, I mean, Hemsworth crossed over and joined the fans and basically crushed his own movie. So I think if they do bring him back, there's gonna be some fences that have to get mended <laughs> when they get in the room. Uh, that's our show. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Jet Report. The show goes on! Yeah.